Hey everyone, just going to make a short video on some sources of common chemicals that I have in my home lab and that are pretty cheap to purchase and easy to acquire from either pharmacies or grocery stores. Still don't have a tripod so I'm going to try and hold the camera as steady as possible and just go through these pretty quickly and then go over some uh, cheap sources of equipment that's also useful to have. So the first that most people probably know about is baking soda. That's sodium bicarbonate. It's a good uh, neutralizing agent for acids. So if I ever do an experiment with hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid and I need to wash the sample with a bunch of water, it's also good to wash with a uh, solution of sodium bicarbonate to ne neutralize the rest of the acid. Same thing, calcium carbonate found in Tums and antiacids. Just another compound and good acid neutralizer. White vinegar is acetic acid. This probably is a dollar nineteen for uh, one quart. This is acetic acid, five percent solution generally is what vinegar is. Another easy chemical to get is Clorox bleach. It's sodium hypochlorite. It's a good disinfecting agent, but it's also a really strong oxidizing agent. I, do, I usually dilute this quite a bit and put it in a little spray bottle and use it for disinfecting things don't like to use it for long periods of time because it smells pretty bad and the fumes can give you a headache after a while. Epsom salt you can get from pharmacies for between three and five dollars. It's a bunch of magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is good for making uh, competent E. coli cells, making them easier to transform. Common table salt, sodium chloride, you can get for pretty cheap at a grocery store. You can also get salt substitute, which is potassium iodide, which is a good source for potassium ions if you ever want to do an experiment with that. Stump, out, stump remover is generally one of two things. It's either potassium nitrate or, in my case, this is sodium metabisulfite. Sodium metabisulfite is good. It's a good reducing agent and sterilizer. Some people use it for sterilizing for home brewing. Um, generally, just want to keep it away from things like this, oxidizing agents. Hydrogen peroxide, cheap to buy, less than even a dollar, 3% solution, good oxidizing agent, good sterilizing agent. Isopropyl alcohol, these usually come in 91% or 70% solutions. Uh, I got this 91% for, I think it was maybe a dollar or dollar fifty. These are really good, I use this before I do any uh, work with bacteria or fungi just to spray it on the table and wipe it down and disinfect the area. Iodine solution, you can get this at a pharmacy. It looks like this was $7.60. I don't really use it that much. I had used it in a uh, dye-sensitized solar cell project. That's the only reason that I had it. The sea salt mix you can get from a pet supply store. Uh, it's mainly used for aquariums, but I used it with a friend to grow some nanochloropsis algae in a photobioreactor. And we also use it in the growth media for Vibrio fasciri, the uh, phosphorescent bacteria that you can isolate off of squid skin. Another thing, I took the label off of this, but this is quinine. Quinine or quinone, I can't remember. Um, this is just tonic water, but if you have a UV light and you shine on this, this grow, bl glow is a brilliant bright blue. Pretty cool to have. Another neat thing I have, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet, is if you take apart a uh, newer and old Brita water filter, you can get a whole bunch of, bunch of activated charcoal out of that, activated carbon. Don't really know what I'm going to use for that, but um, I guess that brings me into the equipment part. This little measuring cup plastic I got at the dollar store for cheap. Another thing you can get at dollar stores are little measuring spoons. They're good in place of uh, spatulas for scooping out reagents. This is some uh, copper chloride crystals I had made. They looked a lot nicer when they were stuck on there. Just with some of that vinegar, some of that hydrogen peroxide, and some copper wire that I had gotten out of a toaster. The other point I was going to make is it's good to take old things that you might normally throw away. This is an old toaster, and that metal up and down um, that panel in there, you can see I've taken it off of this side, is nichrome wire. Nichrome wire, you can't see it too well here, but this is really good if you want to run a current through it. It heats up. Uh, one of my friends just built a, a foam cutter with it. So nichrome wire out of the toaster, a whole bunch of copper wire out of the toaster. 
You can also get nice funnel sets at the dollar store for a dollar. Those are good for transferring liquids back and forth. I usually have a set of screwdrivers. This is just one. Every lab isn't complete without a roll of duct tape, uh, some electrical tape. Nice calculator and a voltmeter are nice to have. Um, these are just cool things I like to collect. That's some copper that I got from a, a gem store or a sort of a collection store. And this is sulfur. If you light any of these sulfur crystals on fire, they glow a pretty brilliant blue. But they release sulfur dioxide, which burns your nose. Um, this is a, a little bit of the equipment I got from uh, a store called Harbor Freight Tools. They make con they make a lot of cheap tools. They're not that high quality, but for the price, you can't really complain. These are nice wire cutters I got for a couple dollars. Um, this is a pump I'm going to use in my distillation setup. Before I was just filling a jar and putting it above my head and siphoning it down and I had to keep refilling and it was a pain. So this is a little 92 gallon per hour pump I got for I think seven dollars. Let's see if I can open it up. Yeah, cool. So I just put that in a bucket of water, run some tubing and uh, I'll have continuous flow to the condensing column. This is a little infrared thermometer I got. You can get these off uh, Amazon or anywhere online for between twenty and thirty dollars maybe. has a light laser. You can go between Fahrenheit and Celsius. This is a little torch I bought from Harbor Freight Tools again for not that much money. Uh, probably shouldn't light it right near the butane thing but it works and it's cheap. It's good for sterilizing inoculation loops if you're going to do any bacterial work. Uh, glasses, cheap. Got this face shield in case I do anything crazy. Or Whenever I pour concentrated acids, uh, I usually wear a face shield and extra protection. Just because I don't want acid burns on my face. Um, and the last thing is basically just a cooler. You can get these for cheap grocery stores or Walmart, 10 or $20. They're just nice to have ice if you need to do temperature sensitive reactions or store cells or enzymes. And so that's about it. This is just a short video to say that you can get a lot of common things you need without paying lots of money online uh, for expensive chemicals. And just be safe with how you store them. I don't store these all in a cl closed bunch like this. I keep the oxidizers away from the reducers. Keep flammable stuff in a separate spot of the lab. So, yeah, go to the dollar store. Go to your pharmacy. Go to a grocery store. Go to cheap stores like that. And you can get a decent amount of, of lab gear for under probably $50 for all this stuff together. So, thanks for watching.